Welcome to this short tutorial we are going to do today on the basic structure of the human spine. Over the next few tutorials we are going to focus on each segment of the spine individually, but for now let's focus on the entire structure as a whole. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is our directional terminology. So we have our spine here with the superior end and the inferior end. So superior being the top, inferior the base. We also have a superior view looking from above and a lateral view, so looking from the side. And this superior and lateral view are going to be of individual vertebrae. We'll also have the dorsal end of that bone, so dorsal being the back or posterior and ventral being the front or anterior. So just different names for posterior and anterior. If we are learning about the spine, one of the first things we are going to need to know is that it is a grouping of 26 irregular bones and it creates a highly flexible yet also very strong column. If we remember our bone types, irregular was one of the four types that we have in our body along with long, short and flat bones. So as I'm showing now, it's just a long grouping of individual bones to create this column that we call the spine. The next thing we want to know is that it surrounds and protects our spinal cord. Our spinal cord being the central highway of the body to send nerve impulses to and from our brain. So it's going to be running through this space here. I'll just show it on our other vertebrae as well. So all of our vertebrae has space for the spinal cord to run through and to protect it. So I've already said that we have 26 bones that make up our spine, but we're going to divide them into separate groups. And there's five groups that we're going to divide them into. The first one you may have heard of before at the most superior end of our spine being called the cervical spine. Of the 26 bones in our spine, seven of them are going to be found in our cervical region. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are our cervical spine bones. The cervical spine is going to extend from the base of our skull to the base of our neck. And as such, these will be the bones supporting your head and neck. The cervical spine also has a couple of unique bones that we will talk about in the cervical spine video. So it includes a few unique bones and they're going to be the C1 and C2. So the first two of those bones. The second grouping of vertebrae we have below our cervical spine is our thoracic vertebrae. Now thoracic vertebrae is going to be made up of 12 separate components, so T1 to T12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we have 12 components in that thoracic spine. The unique features that we are going to find on our thoracic vertebrae are the costal facets, which are the articulation points for our ribs. So our thoracic vertebrae will extend from the base of our neck to where our last ribs attach in the thorax at T12, each one having facets for articulating with our ribs, as I'm just showing now in the purple. So we have transverse facets, superior and inferior facets as well. And I'll just put this transverse one here on our lateral view as well. So we can see all three from that lateral view. The next and last segment of our freely movable vertebrae is the lumbar spine. And the lumbar spine has five components. So L1 to L5, just here. So one, two, three, four, and five. And as we can see, the lower we get into the spine, the thicker these bones are becoming to support the weight of our torso. Okay, our second last segment of the vertebral column that I've just highlighted in green here is called our sacrum. The sacrum is a grouping of 
five bones just like the lumbar spine but the bones of the sacrum are going to be fused so they're fused vertebrae meaning they're not movable between each other those bones have ossified together and the last bone that I'll highlight on the bottom here in orange is our coccyx now the coccyx being the bone that we refer to as our tailbone so right here and with that we've made up the 26 bones of our spinal column so 7 in our cervical region 12 in our thoracic region making 19 5 in our lumbar spine making 24 1 for our sacrum for the fused bones and 1 our coccyx as well making 26 all up now just to finish off the tutorial, I'm going to highlight again here each section of bone. So we've got the cervical here in red. We have our thoracic vertebrae here, slightly bigger than the cervical. And once again, our largest uh, vertebrae are the lumbar vertebrae because they support the most weight. So cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. And we're going to talk about each one of those individually. And the last structure we're going to look at here is our intervertebral discs. These uh, cartilage discs are going to be between each of our freely movable vertebrae, so our cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. We can see them all here. So just drawing them in the lumbar, going up into the thoracic region, but we see them in between all of these vertebrae. One thing we need to know about these is they are classified as fibrocartilage joints. So they're cartilaginous joints in between those bones. That covers the basic skeletal anatomy of our spine. I hope this video has been helpful to you and over the next few videos, we'll have a look at each individual part. Once again, thanks for watching and hopefully I see you all again soon.